have I ever had an awkward moment while scuba diving? The scariest scuba dive. What happened to the boat and the dive shop? Somebody did ask about iTor. I made it just in time for sunset. Let's go check it out. Here comes Abby. Come on! In today's video, I'm going to be answering your questions. I put a little questions box on Instagram. Most of the questions were scuba diving related, so you'll get that, but also gonna cover personal business things that are brand new, and I'm excited to share them with you guys. Vamonos! Welcome to our channel, A Stool Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah, and today, answering your questions about life, the universe, and everything. Not really. But first, you guys have hit me just like right in the heart with your response to my last video. It just is so cool to see the community that is happening here on this channel, on A Stool Unlimited. Like, it's nothing that I ever expected when I started this and it's just really cool to watch it grow. So I just thank you so much for the support and all of the kind words that you shared. If you haven't seen that video, it's linked down in the description below. Okay, before we get into the questions, I just wanna give a shout out to our sponsor, Eco Roots. You guys know by now that I'm a big believer in environmentally friendly products and Eco Roots is by far my favorite. So stay to the end of the video to learn a bit more about them and get a discount code from us. Since this is a more informal Q&A thing, I'm going to get a little bit of food together for myself and we can have a chat over dinner. You guys are gonna love this. Hey, Abby, is it dinner time? What? Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> Let's get you dinner. <laughs> is this every night? Every single night. Where's your whale? Oh my goodness. Your whale? Oh my gosh. Get it. Get it, Abby. You ready? Can you sit? Bang. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> All right. Putting together a little meal here in my everything bowl. I literally just eat all of my meals out of this pot. <laughs> so thank you to everyone who left me a question over on Instagram. If you missed that opportunity, make sure you follow us. And if you want to see really silly content from me on TikTok, I'm a giant goober on that platform. So just a warning, uh, you can join all five Yay! followers that we have. First question is, what advice do I have for a brand new scuba instructor getting started in this industry? So I'll just share from my experience. I went ahead and just did the IDC. And when I did my course, I was still living in California. So I did the IDC in Mexico and then I went back home. And I found someone, a local instructor, to co-teach with. So basically someone who was willing to let me tag along and learn from her. That was wildly helpful because it not only allowed me to get a feel for like how to structure courses, especially in California, because it's, you know, a little different than tropical weather and people on vacation. Basically it was unpaid, but I did get my first certifications. And that's really what I was looking for. I never recommend that people go looking for a job saying that you want to work for experience because dive shops take advantage of that. So in my situation, I was specifically working with an instructor and that was the deal. I worked with her to learn about the courses. I was not offering my free work to help a dive shop function. Okay, that's the big difference. So that's what I would do if you already have the certification and you're just unsure of yourself in teaching courses. Now, if you are shopping for an instructor course, I highly recommend that you look for an IDC MSDT internship because then you're doing the courses, but it's understood that like you're going to be shadowing people and you could even find out if you'd be able to get some certifications during 
that course because when you sign up for MSDT, you can't actually be an MSDT until you have 25 certifications. So, you know, a lot of programs will give you the training and the specialties and then they'll let you hang around and shadow and and get some of those certifications under your belt. If you do go this route, again, you need to be careful that it it has a end point. I'm just holding a tomato. I'm making my dinner and obviously I can't multitask. That you want to make sure that your internship has an end point. Next question is, have I ever had an awkward moment while scuba diving? Oh boy. <laughs> when am I not awkward though? I've had a moment where, oh, this was so gross. Why am I going to poop? Like that's like exactly where my head goes with this. We were at a dive site and like, Normally, when you get a boat briefing, we talk about, you know, only go number two when the boat is moving, because that way, you know, we're leaving the nasty behind us. But that doesn't always work. People have to go when they have to go. And um, I remember coming up from a dive site and there was just, I mean, you can imagine it. It was right there and you're oh gosh, I was trying to like make it so that my clients didn't see. <laughs> like shielding them with my body and distracting them to go up the stairs on the boat. Oh my god, that... I don't know if that's awkward, that's more gross. <laughs> I remember being really embarrassed one time. I was new to side mount. Ooh, what kind of harness was I using at that time? It must have been the Apex. But I, I forgot to put the, so I had everything on and yeah, it was the Apex because it's it had the integrated bladder and I forgot to put the bungee in the crotch strap, right? So that the bladder actually hugs around your body. And oh my God, I felt like such a freaking idiot because I couldn't figure out why I wasn't able to go down. I had the same amount of weight, I was deflating, there was nothing else coming out. Of course there was nothing else coming out. My bladder was like flying back like a freaking bat wing. And oh God, it took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out what was going on. And I can't believe nobody like tapped me and said like, uh, you know, loser. <laughs> But I remember that, again, that's not really awkward, but just like embarrassing for myself. Stuff like that happens. Oh gosh, the next one is scariest scuba dive. I had a very scary moment at Batu Balong, which is a very famous dive site in Komodo. It's a rock in the center of the channel and the currents move very, I find them very strange. Uh, maybe somebody with more knowledge and experience in currents can, and they know that dive site, they can explain it better to me. But honestly, sometimes the currents just, I, I describe it as twisting around the rock. And what happens when it does that twist and it's very strange because it's happened where it just goes for a little bit and then it comes back it like relaxes back into what it was before i have no idea i had a scary moment in one of those twists very strange so i will say that i don't have as many dives at batu belong as a lot of people you know guiding in komodo i honestly really did not like guiding that dive and if i had a choice i wouldn't go there <laughs> like there were always way too many people and the currents were just a little too nutso for me. We were diving and I was trying to get my group away from another group because that dive site is really, really small. So I was getting ahead of them and I literally like, I was not expecting it at all because I had never seen the current that way, but we went straight into a downward current in the middle of the rock where it should be protected. But it's, you know, there's a there's a part of the formation that it makes sense when you look at it that there would be. But I had just never seen it there before. Usually it's always on the sides. I got hit right in that downward current and it was really scary. I had a hold of one client and the wall and my dive master had the other client and the wall. And I look back, everything's okay. I go to move. So when you're in a downward current, it's kind of like a riptide. You literally just have to move outside of it. So I was moving to the left of it to get out of the pole. And I go and move my hand and I'm like rock climbing, right? With my client, like my arm inside of the client's BCD. I go and grab the, the spot and I look back and my dive master is gone. There's really nothing. Like if I let go, there's 
no chance that I'm gonna run into them. So I stayed with what was known there. <laughs> I climbed out, we came up, got to the surface and saw them, the other two, off of the rock. So it pulls you kind of down and then out into the main current stream. And I have to tell you, that ascent with my one client, like I had nightmares about that. Yeah, I, I was super proud of everyone involved though, because even though like that was the end of the dive day, they were very scared and everything, we got them to come out with us on the boat the next day. And we had the most spectacular, you know, normal <laughs> drift diving experience. I mean, we saw a wonder puss and like just amazing things. It was like night and day, the, the difference in quality of diving those two days. It was so crazy. Moral of that story is yes, there can be some scary moments in scuba diving, but I have to say that is the only one that was truly scary in my entire time of guiding and teaching and everything. There have been other moments that have been like stressful because <laughs> those happen, but that was the only one that was truly like, it was, it was very scary. Yeah. Don't be, don't be afraid, but it's, you know, currents are serious. It's a, it's a real kind of diving and especially on big walls. I hope you still want to scuba dive. I hope that didn't scare you. I, I don't want to scare you. To go in a completely different direction now, you guys asked what my favorite dives were. I mean, I absolutely go nuts for any time that I can see seals or sea lions. I just can't get enough of them. I think they're so cute. Manta points, both Manta points in Komodo. I think we had one of the best seasons. When brand new divers get experiences like this, I I love it for them because it's so amazing, but I also feel kind of bad for them because like they've seen the best in like five dives. <laughs> I just inhaled something. <coughs> I have no idea what that was. I think it was a bug. Okay, moving on. The best time to see manta rays in Komodo is like March, April. Right before the pandemic, we got to go out a handful of times. And I remember being at Mawan and we had divers that seriously had single digit dives. And there had to have been 50 manta rays like hanging out. <laughs> like there were so many manta rays. It was gorgeous and they were like flipping all around hopefully i have video and i'll put it right here um it was just the most spectacular thing that's almost why it's better to get certified in um kind of challenging conditions or like low visibility because you will never have a bad day you know because you've experienced something that's like truly awful <laughs> but when you go and everything's been amazing and then you get like a like medium vis day, you'd be like, oh, that was terrible, you know? So you just like have a different perspective. But anyway, it was incredible. And then by far the most fascinating thing that I've ever done while in this job was being in the water with crocodiles in Chinchorro. There are very few people who have experienced this and for good reason. <laughs> it's not a safe thing to get in the water with crocodiles. That's just the, you know, warning, warning, don't do this. Um, but the company that I was working for was specialized in these trips for photographers and had incredible croc handlers, you know, super non-invasive. As you can see, like literally just used sticks. <laughs> kind of crazy, but by far like one of the coolest things. Those creatures are spectacular. I loved this question just because of the way that it was worded, so I'm going to read it, okay? <laughs> what is your least favorite diving spot? A place that's cold, full of evil, and has no viz. <laughs> I, I really don't have one of these dive sites because even like the sort of crappy places, there are things to see. I would say that like some of my worst dives, and that's purely because like visibility can be so awful, is probably between Shell Beach and Morro Bay. So that's actually right here on the Central Coast, like right where I was showing you in the beginning of the video, just on the other side of the rock. So those places can be like, I mean, really bad. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think I know of a place that's full of evil. I want to get back to food. Why am I not making food? So I make giant salads like all the time. That's that's my thing. Where is it? There it is. Dun, da, da. Let's get some dressing going. So next question, name a place you'd like to dive but haven't yet. And I think you guys probably know by now that place for me is Baja. I am on a mission to get to Baja hopefully by the end of this year, maybe early next year, I'm working out some details with the dive shop down there. And I will let you guys know when I have dates and all of the things put together. That's happening. This one made me smile. It's how much do I miss Komodo? And as much as I appreciated my time there, I really don't miss it. I'm sorry. I loved the diving. It was beautiful, but living there was really challenging and I'm in a much better place. This is nutritional yeast. You guys use this? It's like my favorite thing for salads. Now we're getting into the juicy stuff. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. What happened to the boat and the dive shop? Those of you who have been around for a while or you've just seen older videos, you know that I had a boat and dive shop with two partners, Itor, who's on this channel, and another one. Things have been really hard. We opened in April of 2019 and we actually had a really, really good first year. We went from, I think we were like the 35th dive shop in the area and we went from nothing to like number three on TripAdvisor within eight months, I think. It was just going so well. <laughs> but we had our own internal struggles. They were starting to develop at the end of 2019 and then 2020 hit and the pandemic and it just became like this horrible nightmare. Basically, we tried to get by with random work. It never was enough to pay for expenses and stuff. And so, you know, we started to let go of that dream. And we actually just very recently sold. That being said, we sold to a really great team who wants to continue in our footsteps, our guidance basically of running a super professional operation. And so I'm really excited to continue working with them and have a collaboration. So I don't want to say too much just now because it's brand new information, but I want you to stay tuned because we will be sharing a lot more about that development. Regardless of any of the stories like <laughs> You want to put Komodo on your list of places to dive. It's just one of the most spectacular spots. Okay, I need lime on here. What's your favorite thing for salads? I really like just plain olive oil and lime. I think it's nice. Pour spices too. Okay, lime. Continuing that kind of thought, somebody did ask about ITOR. This whole situation, like I just described, I mean, imagine the amount of stress that that put on both of us. So we're doing our own things. He is in Mexico. He's in Baja working for Dive Ninja Expeditions. And it is such an amazing shop. If you couldn't figure it out, that is who we would be diving with on our Baja trip. So spoiler alert. Basically, we're doing our own things. He has Chala down there. And, you know, especially now that the business is sold, it's a time for just rebuilding. So we're just trying to make the best of it. You know, I think I'm finally done making my salad. That took forever. Oh yeah. Check this bad boy out. Like how great is that? Super yummy and nutritious and delicious. So one of you asked, what's my favorite thing about van life? The simplicity of it all. <laughs> but really I, you know, again, because of the financial burden of everything, not having rent in California is a huge help. It also allows me to like stay in places that I wouldn't be able to necessarily afford as a tourist. You know, like I spent about three weeks in Sedona a little while ago and like there would be absolutely no chance to stay in a hotel that long 
you know, and explore the hiking trails and whatever. So it's just, it's a really fun opportunity. What is my favorite type of dive? It might be surprising to hear this, but I actually do really love drift diving. If I'm diving with friends just for a fun dive. Um, hmm. I do not love drift diving as a guide or a teacher just because trying to wrangle divers underwater when there's a strong current is like trying to herd cats together it's fun <laughs> my other favorite is kelp there's just something about like flying through a forest weightless it's really special when did i decide to become an instructor i was working in my previous life <laughs> as a winemaker. There was a moment in time where I was moving up in like responsibility and status and whatever and it was sort of that I either stick with this or I try something else because if I keep going I'm gonna stay for a while. I had done my IDC before and had done some like co-teaching and stuff in California but I just I knew that I wanted to try it. And so I saved up for about a year and I moved to Mexico. I was freelancing, I was teaching yoga, and I just wanted to see what I could create for myself. I really just wanted to go for it, knowing that if it didn't work out, I had a job that I could easily get back into. You should be multifaceted in your ability to create income for yourself. During the pandemic, when we all thought that it was gonna you know, go away after a few months, I decided to come to California temporarily to work harvest. And I was so glad that I had that in my back pocket because I literally decided that I was gonna do it. I had like four interviews lined up within two or three days and I landed a job the following week or something. It was like a shoot, super short timeline. And that's because I was way overqualified to be just a harvest hand. It's really important that you set yourself up to have other options, other opportunities. I was a winemaker and then scuba and yoga instructor. And now rolling right into the next question, what am I doing now instead of being an instructor? I work in communications and marketing for an environmental nonprofit. And honestly, like the work is really demanding because nonprofit sector is just a demanding space to be in but i'm so proud of the work that we're doing in the organization it has a great reputation in the community and we do a lot of really good powerful work it's just something that i'm really happy to be doing and it's just like super in line with everything that i believe in which is why dun, 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 our sponsor for today is eco roots <laughs> non sequitur there i personally have really been focusing on getting away from consumer culture because it just makes me ugh, sick but we all need things like soap so when you run out of your normal deodorant shampoo lip balm just replace it with one of the items from eco roots it comes in zero plastic packaging and it's very much like a small brand they support other small brands i just love it like everything that i use in the bathroom in the kitchen it's all from eco roots it's super high quality so if you want to get something for a friend and like mail it to them as a gift it shows up and it's so nice like it's just a very high quality product check out the link in the description below and also in the pinned comment and use the code Asul Unlimited for a discount at checkout. Okay, that's about it. Like I said, if you have more questions for me, just leave them in the comments below and I will answer pretty much anything. If you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the little bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future scuba diving content. I have some fun stuff planned for 2022. I just wanted to get this out because I, I know that there was some confusion from my last video about whether or not I was still gonna be here on YouTube. And yes, I'm still gonna be making videos. Case in point. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. This is so good. And he is in, oh, that just went down my sleeve. No. <laughs>